Hi, I'm Jack Cush here at ULAR 2023. Interesting abstract, OP0272, early response to rheumatoid factor lowering uh, in patients on DMARDs with RA. This was presented by Victoria Konzet from the Medical University of Vienna here on Friday, day three of ULAR. This study was a 2000 patient RA um, cohort that had serial evaluations multiple times a year that included serial assessments of rheumatoid factor. And in this study, they looked to see what would happen to RA disease activity in people whose rheumatoid factor actually changed, meaning they called it a rheumatoid factor responder. And by the way, why they chose rheumatoid factor and not ACPA wasn't clear to me and wasn't discussed at the presentation. But they called it a rheumatoid factor responder if the patient's rheumatoid factor was decreased by at least 50% or became seronegative in the course of follow-up. They had 1,889 RA patients in the Vienna General Hospital uh, followed for uh, 24 months with um, three to six month visits. And um, what they did was they looked at basically whether lowering your rheumatoid factor changed the outcome. They only included people who were seropositive, uh, who had at least moderate or high disease activity. They excluded people with low disease activity as judged by the SDI. Um, so going in, these patients had uh, TJCs and SJCs of about five or six joints. So it's not that bad. You know, it's not that high. Um, um, and you know, they were mostly female. And of course, they're all going to be rheumatoid factor positive here. Mean rheumatoid factor levels here are 166. So they weren't really high. What they showed was this rheumatoid factor pro responder status was seen at month three in 21%. And at month six in 32% of patients. One of the failings of this study is they do not relate lowering of rheumatoid factor to any drug. They said they were on all drugs, including oral DMARDs and injectable biologics. They said they had very few rituximab patients included in this cohort, but there were some. And when you look at the graph of, you know, who um, reached a low disease activity state or remission, it was way more likely to be seen in those patients who were the rheumatoid factor responders, meaning they went to seronegative or at least half the titer. Now, half the titer could have been a 40 to 20. It could have been from 400 to 200. But there was no distinction made um, in this particular study. They, In the end, they said that they got to remission faster. They um, had improvement in all the variables that one would look at in the core data set, swollen joints, tender joints, global assessment, CRP, hack scores, etc. And they compared this to other ways of getting to treat to target. Like, what's your marker in treat to target? And they said the best marker that they had in predicting a treat to target goal was the SDI score. But that behind that was the rheumatoid factor response as a biomarker, uh, it showed that if you were an RF responder, you had a 13% higher chance of actually achieving your low disease activity state. When I asked, well, how much better was the SDI? They didn't have an answer because they're still doing the analysis. I asked what would happen if you looked at SED rate or CRP, especially CRP, and with the same um sort of rules that were arbitrary, 50% reduction or becoming normal. Um, they didn't have that data. They intend to probably look at that uh, going um, forward. So this was a, uh, an interesting result. It was an across the board um, assessment of rheumatoid factor as a biomarker that would predict. The problem with this, I think this data is misleading. I don't know that I should recommend to you or to anyone or a young rheumatologist that you should do a rheumatoid factor at every visit looking for this. This is something you generally don't see. The drugs that we know that clearly lower rheumatoid factor uh, and that that may um, have some effect on outcomes would be rituximab, abatacept, um, JAK inhibitors. It's thought that TNF inhibitors do not. Some people say there are some studies that show it. 
my look at this as not enough to say that they do. Same for IL-6 inhibitors. Same can be said for methotrexate and, and hydroxychloroquine. But that's looking at it from a drug-specific standpoint. They didn't. They looked at it, all comers, what happens in those who do lower their rheumatoid factor. And in general, when you can show that, those patients generally do better. That literature is already out there. This data, however, says you apply it to everyone with the hope that it can help you predict what's going to happen. I don't think you need it. I think you've got other things you should be relying on, like the SED rate, the CRP, your joint count, the number of swollen joints, quality of life measures, hack score, etc., that you don't need to do expensive tests like Vectro. You don't need to do serial um, serologies that um, it may not be truly predictive. So again, while they're making the claim that this could be a biomarker, this was not the design of this study. They basically showed if you drop your rheumatoid factor, you're going to do better. But they didn't show me enough data to make me do this at every visit in my patients who have rheumatoid arthritis. What do you think? Send me a note.